You probably know about How Did This Get Made, one of my favorite shows here at Earwolf. Paul Shear, June Diane Raphael, and Jason Manzukas watch movies that are so bad they're actually amazing and discuss them with their funniest friends. Well, they have a huge new episode you won't want to miss. Abby Jacobson and Alana Glazer, the creators and stars of Broad City, join the gang live at Clusterfest to watch a truly terrible movie called Ninja Terminator. The worst movies make the best How Did This Get Made and Ninja Terminator makes Waterworld look like a masterpiece. It shocking so check out abby and alana on how did this get made and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode hello friends it is me paul before we get to the episode and by the way thank you for listening to the episode or at least beginning to listen to the episode which you've done just now um before we get to the episode um i wanted to just give you some guidelines for location submissions um as you know or, or maybe you don't um we do improv at the end of the show and the way we had been doing it was we would get a location from our interview guest. After the interview, off mic, I would ask our guest for the um, suggestion of a location, and we would just t- took whatever the interview guest gave us, and that was our location. And then recently, we thought it would be fun if we got a location from the audience. Some people had wanted to submit locations early on, and um, you know the way we were doing it was very clean, very simple. And I, what I liked about it was that there was no argument about the location. It was just here's what you got, and you got to do it. Um, so with the audience throwing out locations, that means we get many suggestions, and we have to kind of sift through them. And I do that with the improvisers off mic before we begin the improv. And what we've found is it's adding too much time to the recording because some of these locations are not helpful. And so I thought I would give you some guidelines. Okay. These are very simple. Um, Number one, we're not going to do any meta suggestions. And I know it seems like it might be fun, but you have to remember that we're hoping and assuming that at least one new person is listening every week who is not familiar with the podcast. And we don't want to alienate people who don't know the regulars on the show or they don't know stuff about Earwolf. It wouldn't be that much fun for them um, because we want to be inclusive of everyone and we don't want to just play to uh, the people that are already listening and do a bunch of in-jokes and stuff like that. We also don't want to do the work of working around and not doing in-jokes and making it something different. So um, that stuff just isn't as much fun for us. And uh, so we're not going to take any meta suggestions like the Earwolf Christmas party or Inside Eben's Keyboard, you know, things like that. Anything that involves our actual, you know, IRL location and the the people who are regulars of the show or Earwolf or whatever. So um, thank you, but no thank you to that. Um, nothing with Trump in it, um, just because, you know, we try not to talk about politics on the show and it still happens sometimes and that's a drag. So, um, you know, we're hoping that this will be a, uh, a haven from that um, and uh, as much as it possibly can be. So, uh, you know, nothing about Donald Trump or the White House press briefing room or whatever. Um, also because, you know, we record the episodes in advance and topical stuff might not uh, work even a couple weeks later. So, um, you know, we're not, we're going to avoid those as well. So if you just didn't submit those altogether, that would be great. Um, and lastly, uh, try to keep them as concise as you can. Um, I know sometimes it seems like it will add to the fun if you give us a super long location. And, you know, there's a joke in hearing a super long thing read out loud, um, but it's not as much fun for us because, uh, you know, it's it's then we're we're trying to play to the strictures of an insanely detailed, detailed sentence, you know? So, any location that might involve um, more than, say, <laughs> five words, we're getting into dangerous territory. So just try to keep it short and sweet. Um, it can still be fun. It can still be silly. It can be as specific or as general as you want it to be. But, um, you know, kind of filibuster locations are are not as much fun and, and way less likely to be chosen. Um, because for something like that, to be chosen. It's got to be just undeniably funny. And so far we have not, so far we've been able to deny all of them. So, um, uh, maybe don't do that. Um, that's it. I think those are the only guidelines. If you would like to submit a location, we usually record Wednesdays at 12 PM Pacific. We will send out a tweet from our Twitter account. That is spontaneous. Nation. the handle is the name of the show spelled the same way. 
um, at noon, we'll send out a tweet saying we're taking locations. You got five minutes go at the end of five minutes. We are no longer taking locations. Okay. So, um, that's it. We're going to do it this way for now. Maybe we'll figure out a, a better way to do it in the future. Maybe it'll be something that the Earwolf forums can get involved in somehow, but it doesn't seem, it seems like we have more people on Twitter than we have commenting in the forums. So um, there you go. We, we, this is a work in progress, but it has been fun to include the listener. And thank you to everyone who has submitted a location, whether we accepted it or not. We really do appreciate it. So um, there you go. Onward and upward. And for now, uh, enjoy the episode. I love you. Eben, take it away! Welcome! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I welcome you! If not me, then who? If not now, then when? What if you go an entire day without anyone welcoming you to a thing? Why do we say you're welcome after thank you? And why don't we start off with you're welcome anytime anyone comes into a room? What do we say? Hi. <laughs> it's almost an insult. So short. Sometimes if you work in a store, they make you say welcome to people. Like it's, what are we, what uh, uh, Jurassic Park? <laughs> Welcome to Rite Aid. What? That doesn't happen. <laughs> there's, no, there's no Rite Aid greeter. <laughs> Unless you count that Salvation Army guy who is outside my local Rite Aid and will not leave. What are you doing here? It's not Christmas time. Also, why aren't you wearing a Salvation Army uniform? And why are you pointing a knife at me and saying, stick him up? <laughs> Why don't we just stick them up when people walk into a room? That'd be fun. Stick them up. Would you like a makeover today? That's right. That's right. The person on the makeover counter is at the front door doing fake robberies and trying to undercut the perfume person. Can you imagine if you walked into a department store and that perfume person was at the front door and it was just like, oh, no escape. What if they were outside hiding behind a trash can? What if they were disguised as a trash can in the manner of push the talking trash can? Rest in peace. A Disney World attraction, a Disneyland attraction that did not last. Talking trash can, that would insult people. <laughs> what a weird thing. What a weird thing. Why did they have that? We've talked. It's come up on this show before, but, <laughs> but was that one of Walt's original ideas? And we should have, uh, birds that represent, um, uh, all of the countries of the world in like hard stereotypical fashion. Like I want these accents to be cringy. I think a trash can who makes fun of tourists. Yeah. That sounds good. Oh, you know I hate people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a, co a, co a blind question from our previous episode's guest. It's not inspired by a conversation I had with someone else. What? It's not the beginning of the show. Oh, you know, uh, I was just talking to somebody else about this. Now I'm talking to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> then I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, perhaps utilizing details gleaned from our conversation with a special guest. <laughs> and it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen, very excited to have this gentleman on the show. Been a fan for some time. We sort of worked together on a TV show one time. Sort of. A million years ago. You will recognize him from Red Oaks, from Blind Spot. Oh, and if you haven't played the Blind Spot game, let me tell you, it's a lot of fun. What you do is you watch the TV show Blind Spot. Whenever there's a fight scene, you try to yell Blind Spot at the moment of impact. When anyone lands a punch or a kick. 
Blind spot. Blind spot. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Oh, I know him from, of course, we first knew each other, the LA Complex. Yes. Streaming on Netflix. Check it out, guys. It's a very good and strange show. Fantastic program. Right? Yeah. It is. I do say so myself. It is. Even it's, if I wasn't on it, I would love it. What I like about it is you think it's going to be one thing, and then it turns out to be a different thing entirely. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. I play myself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program, Ennis Esmer. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. Hello. En- Ennis, how did I do on your name? Uh, perfect. It looks like it's just pronounced like it's written. Exactly. <laughs> and there's no dark secret behind it where I changed it a few years ago to make that happen. Or uh, wh- Wait a minute. Are you telling me? I'm a bit of a detective. Go ahead. And I feel like what you said. That's a pretty big clue. <laughs> it sounded like I said one thing. Did you change the spelling? I added an N to my name professionally from that, the given. This explains it. E-N-I-S was my given name. It's a I Turkish saw, name. You posted an old headshot. I did. Which had the original spelling of Which, your name. Which, yeah, it had the one N. And uh, about 10 years ago now, I added an N so that mm. idiots. Happy anniversary. Would, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> So that, um, so that idiots wouldn't make fun Hold of you. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, so that idiots wouldn't make fun of you. Yeah. Not the people that, people mispronouncing the name, you can understand. Sure, but invariably, if you can imagine such a sure. name, uh, e, with the <laughs> E-N-I-S. If you can imagine such a name. <laughs> if you can imagine parents. Well, I mean, it's a Turkish name, and it was it's a, the, the proper Turkish pronunciation is uh, Enis, which is not, uh, it doesn't exist here, I guess. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, people would make would make, mispronounce it, and then invariably giggle or laugh to themselves, or I can't help myself. You must get this all the time, uh, and then just just call me penis to my face. Just call me <laughs> professional contexts. You know, when I was doing stand up, I would get introduced, and they would make fun of my name, and and there was like sort of a straw that broke the camel's back, and I was like, I'm gonna try something. <laughs> Added an N, problem solved. And then, and then now, if you get it wrong, it's all your fault. Sure. You know what Did, I mean? Like nobody, you could say like, oh, E-N-I-S, I don't know. Rather There's than, other ways to say it, maybe. Let me, I mean, I think what you've done works. Thank you. My parents didn't like it. Of course not. Parent, what are they like? <laughs> right? <laughs> they were like, it's not your name. I'm like, but it is, it's my name. Yeah. I, it is my name. How dare you? Here's what I would have said to please your parents. Yeah. Capitalize the I-S. So people emphasize that part. That ship sailed like 30 years ago, though, because I, you know, I had the, in my uh, uh, assimilating into Canadian culture, (laughs) I thought I reached for the shore, the lowest uh, branch I could find, which was the name Dennis. So Dennis without the D is how I would explain it to people. And then they would laugh to themselves and think of other things that it was like. And this, is, a, this is great fun. So I was going to say, let's <laughs> really tearing these bandages off. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as I have a question to you, okay. this was submitted by our previous guests, Emily V. Gordon and Kumail Nanjiani. Oh, wow. And I don't know, I don't know if they, this is a collabo question okay. or if one of them made an executive decision. All right. But the question is, when is the last time you vomited? <laughs> it's a fun memory. Um, I'm not a big vomiter. Who? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, do you know someone who is? No, but I don't have like <laughs> I, I. You some people I would assume most people could reach, but I don't mean like I'm, I'm not big into it. Like it just doesn't happen that often. Like if I get really, if I have too much yeah. to drink or something, that's usually not the uh, the, result. the end result. For a lot of people, it is. For me, it isn't. I feel like I threw up in my own mouth a few weeks ago. <laughs> But uh, that was just from a burp, maybe that went sideways. I, we're just we're, <laughs> you never had it's a burp, it's a burp puke, you know. You never had sure. a burp puke. It's hey, well, hey, I'm not on trial here. I, I know. Look, no one's saying this. Thomas' mom's really giving me the gears, but, but we can't acknowledge her. We oh, sorry, sorry, she's here. She's okay. the secret shopper. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, this is good. Yeah. She works for your wolf. I mean, who? Uh, but yeah, so yeah, like when you were a, when you were a kid, thrown up from sickness. Yeah. I've started to more recently start to feel like I, I never used to throw up from seeing other people throw up. And that's something that started to, that's something I've developed recently. Let me ask you this. What you think would be the opposite? Do you feel it is ever justified to show vomit on television? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great part B question. Have uh, you ever, here's, here's my question. Yeah. Have you ever seen a vomit scene in TV yes. or movie where yes, you're like, oh, we needed to see that vomit. I see what you're, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, I you think, do. I think you could do it off camera. 
Always. Yeah. 100% of the time. Unless that's supposed to be the point, you know, unless it's like a, a Lars von Trier movie or something and it's Fuck supposed to make guy. you feel gross. <laughs> it, it's uh, If it's just to sell the story, you don't need it. No. You can make the same argument for nudity, though. This is a very slippery slope to censorship. Censorship. It, it's true. Censorship. Censorship. Yep. You have, to take, you have to take a drink every time you say censorship. Okay. Oh. <laughs> mm, mm. You have to take a drink and remove a word from your vocabulary. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's how you play censorship. Yeah, it's hard. It's but hard. but nudity, it's the same thing. It's yeah. never justified. We all pretend that sometimes it is. Yeah. Because we like to see nude people. Right, that's true. <laughs> but isn't that, aren't we now talking, isn't that a grander conversation about... Oh, it's very what, grand. What's to be seen in art? Oh, yes. Good. Why it's do you think grand. I wore this monocle? Oh, it's a, <laughs> that's why you pulled it out. You said that vomiting is not usually the end result of drinking too much for you. That's what true. What is the end result? Um, increasingly more painful hangovers. They're just get, it's getting to the point now where I don't even want to really, I mean, I still do it, but I don't really want to drink anymore. Sure. I forget. <laughs> I forget halfway through the second whiskey. But so I you, you don't want to just pull back on it a little bit. You're like, I shouldn't do this anymore. Yeah. I, for, I forget that this is what happens. Well, it's like you get sick. It's poison, you know, alcohol. Yeah. yeah so right. you get sick from it. So I, that's what a hangover is. So I don't want to get... Sick? It's why would I make myself sick? Why would someone choose that to make themselves sick? <laughs> and whiskey is your jam? Uh, yes, I'm trying to shift it to a different summer jam, maybe a, a vodka or a tequila, because whiskey's a sad drunk by the end of it. It can't, Do you feel that alcohols, different alcohols affect you differently? Yes, definitely. Gin? Let's let's do uh, whatever we think we're capable of. <laughs> Who? What? Is. You know, <laughs> let's open let's open it up. Let's open it up to the table. Whiskey, it, whiskey, the world gets smaller. It gets smaller and quieter. Right. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And gin, you feel more adventurous. Sure. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's um let's start running places instead of walking or Ubering. <laughs> <laughs> let's run I'll places. Just, I'll just run home from this bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this is a thing. I, that was easier happened? to do when I lived on like a college campus. That was no problem. But I used to get really when I would get drunk, I would really run fast. Home for some reason it was just really like at to top do. speed. Yeah, as fast as I could, <laughs> and yet didn't throw up. I don't know. But did you did you stumble? Uh, I must have. <laughs> I'm sure I did. The last thing you remember is sure breaking into a full run. Yeah, and then you woke up the next day. <laughs> yeah, with sore shins. <laughs> did you ever sleep in your clothes? I love to. I prefer it. What? Still to this day? I have trouble falling asleep if I make a big ceremony about sleeping. But if I just lie down and I don't think about it, I fall asleep no problem. <laughs> you're, Am I a so mess? You're, you're characterizing what most normal people do. As I hate it. Making a big ceremony. I hate, it. I, hate, I hate going to bed. <laughs> do you really? I do. I hate it. I prefer to be on getting, a couch. How are you about getting out of bed? Hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And I get mad when I wake up before I want to. I have a lot of free time. Is that clear? Has that been made clear? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I find like I could fall asleep watching something, watching a movie, and then snap out of it and go like, oh, I should go to bed and I'll be up for two hours. I don't go back to sleep. It's, um, it's heartbreaking, really. It's, no, it is. Yeah. This is just a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of skeletons coming out of the closet today. <laughs> Do you feel unburdened? Um, I feel embarrassed. Why? Oh, it's just private shames. But the sleeping thing, you can't do anything about that. I know, but it feels like I should be able to. I was better at sleeping before. I'm getting more nauseous now. Like, you know, like these things are, as I get older, <laughs> you'd think that you would build up an immunity to throwing up. Do you throw up when someone else throws up? Is that ever something that's happened? I've not, I've not gone so far as to throw up when I see somebody throw up, but I have gagged for sure. Right. Yeah. But that never used to happen to me. And I think because I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, yeah, barfing's gross. And when I see it, I start to <laughs> oh, think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is not what I thought we'd be talking about. What did you think we'd be talking about? It's fun stuff. <laughs> What's a fun thing you'd like to talk about? I don't know. What'd you do with your day? Uh, this is it. Cool. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's it's just past noon. Okay, perfect. As we're talking. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, well. <laughs> now, as you, you mentioned that you live you live in Canada. I do. I live in Toronto, Canada. Right. Yeah. How, how old were you? you? You talked about assimilating. How old were you when you got to Canada? My parents were three. The year was 1981 when we moved from Istanbul, Turkey. Your parents to... were three? I was three when my parents <laughs> moved us. <laughs> you were, I'm not wrong, right? Is that oh, yeah. what happened? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was three when my parents had censorship. Hang on. Hang on. 
I can't say assimilate anymore. All right. Uh, you were yeah. three years old. So do you have any memories of Turkey? Not really. Not as a baby. That's, yeah. that's tough. My first memory is actually of running at top speed from daycare <laughs> to kindergarten. Uh, sorry, from kindergarten to my daycare in a balaclava that my parents gave me because uh, it was cold mm -hmm. because no one picked me up from from kindergarten when it was over. Did you have it over your face? I did have it over okay. my face. That is, for, for uh, Americans, that is a ski mask. Yeah. Yeah. Call it a, is that, you don't say balaclava here? No, we say ski mask. But nobody wears those skiing. I don't think anyone wears them at all anymore, except for nefarious purposes. Right, yeah, exactly. They're for heists. But I, I had movies. one when I was a kid. Yeah, I remember yeah. having one when I was a kid. It's uh, it's definitely been stigmatized since then, Yeah, since our childhoods. They're also disgusting. Yeah, they're gross. Like, <laughs> it's not trapped. He, yeah, you would just have, you'd be trapped in there with your own breath. Yeah, right. And anything that gets out is just going right up into the part between your nose and yeah. your mouth. Oh, I could still, I could smell that wet yeah. wool to this day. They were nightmares. They were nightmares. So you were a little kid in a yeah. ski mask running. running at top speed. Maybe that's the first time, it's the first time I remember running. <laughs> and I haven't stopped. Did, uh. did people, when you, when you were a college student, did people remark on the running? I was usually by myself at that point. It was like the end of the night. This is a memory I haven't thought of in years. But it sure, just came up. surely someone knew about this. Because you, you must have been seen on campus. They were drunk too. It was dark. I'm getting drunk during the day. Okay. I, I don't, Sorry, I'm getting I, very defensive. You're getting very defensive. You don't need to be defensive. Okay. All we right. all have things like this. That's we true. all have things like this. That's true. I mean, I don't, but I, I think that <laughs> right. I think that most people do. <laughs> it's something, I never run sober, which is weird. I don't think I ever really run, so I don't choose to run when I'm sober. When is the last time you did a drunk run? Uh, oh, it's been years. It's been years. How many years? Half a year. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, there was, you know, there's a lot of ice on the roads. So you got to be careful. <laughs> That's true. Now it's very warm here. It's true. <laughs> Never any danger of slick roads. Yeah. I don't think I have an excuse to run in this country, in this particular state. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ennis, yep. we wish you the best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I go now? I leave now? Uh, no, you can stay, but That's we. Great. But this part is over. Okay, this part's done. Ennis, where can people find you online? Should they wish to find you, and should you wish to be found? Uh, well, if you're on any of the social media, it's uh, at Ennis Esmer. With two ends. <laughs> now with two ends. Now with two ends. Now with two ends. <laughs> and Instagram, all that Same. stuff. Same thing. Twitter, yeah. And Where else would you want to find me on? It's the internet. That's about it. Slack. <laughs> Is that new? No, that's not new. I think that's more of a thing if you work in offices, people oh, have okay. to do that. I still get LinkedIn invites. <sighs> yeah. Come on, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, it, the, it'll be the end of June as people are hearing this. What would you like to promote? Uh, well, um, if it's the end of June, then we're shooting the third and final season of Red Oaks. Third and final. Yeah, they announced that it's the final season. Wow. We got six episodes. I just, a month ago, read the scripts, right? Because it's the end That's of right. June. That's right. And uh, yeah, it's, very, it's going great. It's going great. <laughs> Good. I keep getting recognized. It's amazing. <laughs> Is that true? I didn't know that many people. No, I'm doing like a month from now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing like a pretend thing where I'm like. Wait, it's, so, now, so now the end of June, are you shooting currently or it's airing currently? It's shooting it's shooting yeah so you're getting recognized from shooting just from shooting <laughs> just yeah. on set yeah just on just set the other the crew yeah right they're like hey, uh, hey they're, they're looking for you are you on the show yeah yeah we met earlier how do you now you're you spend most of your time on that set in tennis wear yes it's the best are you tempted to run um I, it's, it usually gets pretty hot we're in we're in country club country so it's pretty hot uh, have i been drinking in this scenario I'm asking you. Okay. Uh, no. Usually just a light jaw because I'm wearing makeup and I'll sweat it right off. It's my bur It's the schwitzy man's burden. And as you pass my test. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. And when we come back, you'll meet our improvisers. You're so lucky and I love you. Picnics, potlucks, dinner parties, barbecues. Good food is essential to a successful summer. If you have bad food, your summer is a failure. And now it is easier than ever to create delicious summer meals with Blue Apron. Because for less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients 
right to your door. I don't mean it as a mockery. I'm trying to make it sound fun. Blue Apron is completely flexible, so you can customize your recipes each week and choose a delivery option that fits your needs. Okay? Within reason. Don't be like, deliver it to a mountaintop where I associate with eagles. You need an address. Can't just have, can't tell Blue Apron, uh, mountaintop USA. Look for eagle associates. Come on, guys. And Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient arrives ready to cook or Blue Apron, Blue Apron will make it right. They'll send a baby to collect everything and give you the good, correct ingredients. Seriously, it's a problem. My, my talking. Something bad is happening. Some of the meals available in July include seared chicken and creamy pasta salad with summer squash and sweet peppers. Creamy shrimp rolls with quick pickles. Oh, I hate slow pickles. And sweet potato wedges. I hate sour potato wedges. Fresh basil fettuccine, fettuccine pasta with sweet corn and guanelle pepper. Chile butter steaks, not chili, chile butter steaks, with Parmesan potatoes and spinach. These all sound like good meals. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free. That's a day of eating with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash PFT. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash PFT. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Oh, it gives me great pleasure to tell you that Spontanea Nation is once again sponsored by Lisa Mattress. Lisa, thank you. You're always there for us. Lisa was founded with a simple goal to help people sleep better. It, don't, it doesn't get much simpler than that. Help people wake up better? That's more complicated. And with an innovative direct-to-consumer online strategy, Lisa's 100% American-made mattresses are challenging the traditional mattress industry. Wait a minute, I just thought of something. If you're helping people sleep better, you're already helping them wake up better. Oh, Lisa's double dipping. And with an innovative direct-to-consumer online strategy, Lisa's 100% American-made mattresses are challenging the traditional mattress industry. If there's anything I hate more than poor sleep, it's these mattress industry fat cats who just have to line their own pockets and keep America sleepy during the day. Forbes even named Lisa one of the top 20 startups to watch. And I know, uh, stop screaming. I'm getting to it. Everyone's favorite part. Lisa was internet retailer's fastest growing e-retailer in 2015. Please, please, let me say it. Let me say it. Okay? And... Fine, say it with me. It's B Corp certified. See for yourself why everyone is raving, like I just did, about their B Corp certification. See why everyone is raving about Lisa by trying it in your own damn home. 100 nights risk-free. Choose from three different premium foam universal adaptive feel layers, including, here they go, <laughs> the 2-inch Avena foam top layer for cooling and breathability, the 2-inch memory foam middle layer for body contouring, or the 6-inch dense core support foam for durability. Lisa mattresses are available online only in the United States, the United Kingdom, the regular Canada, and good old Germany. Or, you didn't see this coming, at the Lisa Dream Gallery in Soho, New York City. And the mattresses ship to you compressed in a box. They don't just stick a stamp on a mattress and then you have to go pick it up at the post office. With prices starting at just $525, what do you have to lose? Plus, all jokes aside, for every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter. Lisa, you didn't have to do that, but you did. And they've already donated over 10,000 mattresses. And right now, you can get $100 off a Lisa mattress with the offer code PFT. You've heard this ad a million times. Now you're going to try it. That is L-E-E-S-A dot com, offer code PFT, for 100 American dollars off. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Welcome back to Spontanea Nation. I'm still the guy from before. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the world of Make Pretends. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is freaking out about it. <laughs> this cuckoo brain sitting right next to me, you know her and you love her, Jean Villa Peak. Hello. Welcome back. Jean, Thank how you. are you doing? Great, great. Very you, well. Last time I saw you, we did a live show together. We did the quartet shows. That's, that's oh, the last yes, time I saw yes. you, right? It was me, it was Jean. It was our friend Carla Kukowski and Tammy, Tammy Sager. Sager. Yeah. It was so much fun. That was a great show. Oh, my God. It was so... I still think oh, about it yeah. sometimes. Jean, how are you doing now? I'm great. Today, right this second. I don't know. I feel very good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? I was... Yeah. Yes. I just took... I worked last week in uh, Northern California, and it was a crazy hard week and then the last day before we flew we had free time so this friend of mine and I drove to the Redwoods it was so beautiful and I've still um, never been don't do it then it's Why? too late it's too no late. <laughs> I heard that they are that one tree they're tearing down so oh is that it they're is it tearing the it down through? or is it dying yeah the one you can drive through well there was one we went in early and then on our way out there was a couple and the guy was probably in his 70s and his wife and he was like I just read that the tallest redwood is in this grove and he <laughs> marched past us and my friend's a photographer so she was taking some pictures and then he came back he's like it's not marked so I'm not <laughs> enraged because he wanted to achieve seeing this tree and then he just mar- he was he so mad marked- here's the thing he he did yeah, he did. Just look Just up. Pick you one. probably yeah. saw. <laughs> look at them all, and you saw yeah. the tallest one. Yes. <laughs> did you drive through that tree? No, I don't think that was in this place. We were in a real small red red grove. Uh-oh. Did you? Oh, there she goes. <laughs> did you try to drive through a tree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Turns out they're pretty solid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you made it back alive. Thank you. Gene, <laughs> I'm going to turn away from you now right. to look right across. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> You're very accepting of this process. I'm going to look right across the table from you. Hi! Hey. This guy. It feels like a million years since we've had him on the show. It's been. A, it's, it's been. It's been. It's how been are you? a minute, Tess. Yeah, it's been say. a minute. How are you? Our old friend, Chris Tallman. Now with two N's. <laughs> Chris-en? Mm-hmm. Chris and? Mm-hmm. Chris Tallman. Yeah, you got it. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you. How have I been? I've been well. Good. <laughs> How have you been? I've been well also. Thank you. What are the things that you've been doing? Um, what have we been doing? Um, I was working on that show called The Thundermans. Yes. We shot a Hawaii episode. <gasps> Aloha. Showbiz oh. spoiler, not shot in Hawaii. Oh, what? no. Everyone got that? real excited. And then we went to... Are you kidding me? Long Beach, oh. California. Oh. What a bait and switch. Yeah. Even Sanford and Son went to Hawaii. I know. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I wanted to. Oh. What are you... So you... I Please walk me through this, how you discovered that you were not going to Hawaii. Well, of course, word spreads early before it's officially announced. One of the bosses of the show kind of leans to me and says, Hey, man, we're all going to go to Hawaii. And so everybody, because it has been officially announced, you know, but everybody starts, oh, 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 what are you going to wear? I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt. What are you going to wear? <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow. What are you going to wear? <laughs> you know, I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt. Pre-Hawaiian tops. <laughs> and then I think what happens is, is now we're at the table reading, everybody's, Ugh, and there's a schedule inside. And, and also, we're also kind of, because, you know, things are ahead of shooting, but yeah. you still know, like, seems awfully close to shooting, and no one's asked me which uh, suite <laughs> yeah. I would like to stay in exactly. on which island. Yeah, yeah, we should probably start booking flights, Yeah, right? we should probably, I mean, isn't this shooting in, like, a week? Don't you want my known traveler number? Yeah. <laughs> and so then you look in the thing, and it shows, like, oh, we're going to shoot this thing. It's a two-hour, it's, like, two-hour drive. Why would you, how... <laughs> Well, that must be a far drive across the island. Is that what that means? <laughs> no. So, yeah. So then everybody's like, you still want to be excited because it's still like a special episode. It yeah. is. It, it, for it, the it. people watching it. Yeah, for the people watching. Here's the thing I learned from shooting on a beach is everything is uphill. 
everything <laughs> is uphill. <laughs> what do you mean? Because like we were shooting on the beach. Yeah. And because it's sand, even though it's a slight incline, no right. matter which, even if you walk towards the water, you would sink into the sand. And so every step was more exertion than I was prepared for. That is true. And, and I'm, I'm also a schwitzy guy. Sure. Oh, boy. Um, that is very true that the uh, the sand of the beach is very difficult to walk on. We've never done anything about this. Mm. And <laughs> it looks like we never will if our uh, system remains as gridlocked as it is. That's why we need to vote no on Prop D. Get rid of beaches. That's right. <laughs> or yes. Wait. <laughs> Just vote on Prop it's D. It's very everybody. cleverly worded. Vote on Prop D. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Chris, I'm sorry about that. Did the guy ever apologize? Who, uh, <laughs> nah, you know, that ship had sailed. Sorry, that luau had porked, danced. I, I don't know. That luau had porked. I'd never been to a luau, so I can't tell you how it said. Censorship. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it. Chris, I'm gonna turn away from you because we have a brand new person. Oh boy. This, <laughs> this gentleman making a Spontaneous Nation debut. Yep. You've also seen this gentleman alongside NS Esmer. Mm-hmm. On NBC's Blind Spot. That's true. Don't forget to play the Blind Spot game. <laughs> Blind Spot. <laughs> Blind Spot. Please, please welcome Josh Dean to the show. Hello, Paul. Josh, do you prefer, professionally, do you prefer Josh or Joshua? Uh, Josh is my professional there name. There we go. I nailed it on George all George is my actual name. What's your actual name? George. Get out of town. George Joshua Christian Dean. Whoa. So many <laughs> names. And my mother oh. was Dutch, which I don't think is an explanation of any kind, but that is the one I have been given. It's a fun fact. Um, <laughs> what Were you George for a while or were you always Josh? Always Josh. Always Josh. Okay. I'm George the Seventh, apparently. But, uh, but uh, they were. And I really wish that my parents had called me that. Uh, like, actually said that more often. Because I always wanted to put a suffix of the seventh, right? Absolutely. Is that where the suffix, would the, the number be a suffix? I don't I don't think, I don't know. Yes, it's it like, would. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a nod from the secret chopper. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a win. I like, it's very rare, but every once in a while I see a drop down menu on a form. Yeah, I know. That's that has all kinds use. of crazy suffixes. Yeah. I got to look at that more often. Esquire, yeah. all the good stuff's back there. <laughs> Yeah. HRH. HRH. Um, your mother is Dutch, you say? I did. Is she from Holland? She is. She's from Hennep. <laughs> from where? Hennep. What? I've never heard of it. It's a, it's a teeny little village. Uh, in fact, she's from just outside of it in Nijmegen. Oh, that I've heard of. Oh, uh, naturally. Um, does she have an accent? No, goodness, no. She's been in Canada a very long time. Was she an immigrant, though? She was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm, how old was she? Three? I How'd mean, I'm not. I, we can call her. That's okay. Are you sure? Uh, I'll just call her. You don't. So you know some things about your mom, but not everything. I'd, I mean, I know it all, but I don't know what she it, like wants publicly. Uh, <laughs> she is there some legal thing where she has to fake having been in this country longer than she has? Yes, been? yeah. She and my dad are in a sham <laughs> marriage, and it's just for her to be able to get her green card. Sure. It's been over forty years, fifty years, sixty years that she's been in Canada. Way so. over forty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does she? Can she speak? Uh, yes. What is it? What is the language? Dutch. Dutch. Dutch okay, yeah. Okay. She. I, I think she can, but I think she speaks <laughs> it at like a four four year olds uh, level because that was what she was when she moved. Oh, I trying. knew I'd get the answer. Son of a gun! You I are. Knew it. You're a real Matlock. <laughs> what was Matlock's thing? I don't know. Was he? He was just a southern guy. I could call my mom and ask. That's. When's the last time you threw up? Oh, good question. Thank you. I throw. I love. I throw up a lot. I do. I, if I sense that trouble's on the way, <laughs> I will get a towel. I'll. I'll get. I'll lay that down. I'll get some a large glass of water, and I will <laughs> light some candles. Light some candles. Romance it a little bit, <laughs> and I will make myself throw up. No, I've never done that. I you, will. You're, you're saying finger down the throat. Yes, I will do oh. it if, because I know if I, either I can be in charge of this. Or it's just going to happen of its own accord mm-hmm. in the middle of the evening, uh, night, in the middle of the night, generally not mid-evening, <laughs> around 8.30 is when it really kicks sure, in. absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I'd rather take care of it on, uh, you know, before I go to bed. Wow. And then that, just brought, that problem's solved. I mean, I, I, there's a certain nobility in that? I certainly, I, I certainly feel that way. I'll wear a crown. <laughs> I'll put, I get, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll be all... 
I'll brush my teeth after. I have it all well, set I up. Well, I hope so. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I'm right there. That's, I mean, you, you say that like you're treating yourself. I am. I like to, I like to do a little something special after. I'm like, sorry that I put you through this, guys, to my now, teeth. Now, do you tell, and you're a married man. I am. Will oh, you say to man, your wife, yeah. hey, I'm going to go make myself throw up? She's like, it's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, last time you threw up? Uh, like a month and a half ago in front of my six-year-old daughter who now asks me if, if my stomach feels okay every day. Happy <laughs> <laughs> ending. I, got a, I, got a, I got, came home with a stomach bug. It was one of those things where I was like, honey, you need to get out of the bathroom. Just a second, daddy. Honey, you need to get out of the bathroom. Just a second. Like, you know, playing with yeah. lipstick. And finally, so I, I did one of those, like, I have to get past my child. It's not going to happen. So I literally threw up like, in front of her, which as wow. a child is ground shaking. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I never saw my parents throw up. That would be. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I felt horrible. She was sobbing. Oh so, no! Yeah, well, because, that's terrifying. Oh, no. Especially as a kid, you see like one of the two people you kind of think of as like, well, that's they're never going to get hurt. That yeah. that's my barometer of everything fine. Yeah. and I just went. Oh, wow. Man. And so, now you're forever weak in her eyes. Yeah. Gene, last time you threw up. <laughs> last time I can remember <laughs> is I had food poisoning the first time my now husband, then boyfriend stayed over. So it was oh, bad no. in a small apartment. That's love. I'm sick. Is, and he was like, I kind of wanted to go. And I didn't want to. I could. I was a jerk if I left. But he was like, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. Was I was bad. sick every hour. It was great. <laughs> Sends a bad message. Yeah. <laughs> How could you not feel responsible? He put a ring on that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have to take a break. Okay. When <laughs> During the break, we will secure a location for our improv from the social networking platform Twitter. If you'd like to submit a location for our improv, we usually ask for the prompt 12 p.m. Pacific on Wednesdays when we record, and we comb through them. And then we select one, and then we read your name on the air. Follow at Spontaneous Nation on Twitter and look for the prompt. <laughs> then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. I am excited to announce the launch of Stitcher Premium. You've been hearing about this and that. What's happening with this? What's happening with that? I have answers. Stitcher Premium is launching. It is the new subscription service that brings all your favorite free and premium podcasts together under one roof or roof if you're from that region. With Stitcher Premium, you get access to the same exciting content as Howl, more than 250 hours of exclusive original shows, ad-free archives, and bonus episodes of your favorite podcasts. If you are a Howl subscriber, oh, this is great news. Because with Stitcher Premium, you no longer have to switch apps to listen to premium content. You can listen to the exclusive Howl shows you love in Stitcher alongside your favorite free podcasts. Your Howl account info like favorites, playlists, and listening history can be easily transferred over to Stitcher. Guys, it's great. To learn more about Stitcher Premium, more than what I just told you, Go to stitcherpremium.com slash spont. S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R-P-R-E-M-I-U-M dot com slash S-P-O-N-T. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you'll never guess what. We looked on Twitter. We got our location. We're going to reveal the location. We're going to do our improv. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in time. Let's say someone is having a flashback. We're learning how something came to be. We'll use this flashback sound effect. That takes us into the past. But you can't stay in the past forever. Let's say we need to return back to our current scene or travel into the future for some reason. Use this flash forward sound effect. Right? <laughs> now, if we're in a scene, we want to move about in space, but not in time. This is a meanwhile, we press this button. Same time, just in a different location. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. Mm hmm. Copy. Can you hear this? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to reveal our location provided to us by internet user Jesse, a.k.a. at Wash Barn. And that location is... <laughs> a covered wagon fording a river. A covered wagon fording a river. We take you now to a covered wagon fording a river. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put all of the foodstuffs and the, the linens in here. All right. You know, I'm a little worried. I, this is a pretty wide river and getting deep. It's getting deeper with the rain. Uh, if we don't make it across, Joseph, I, and we end up just floating down the river, I'm all right with that. Miriam, you're willing to just let everything go? You just let us float down the river to our deaths? We left Baltimore to find something new, and I, I'm not stuck on what that new thing is, even if it's south. Well, that's pretty far south. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's as far south as you can get. We're going to the bottom of a body of water. What? Ma, whoa, Pa? Whoa. We're going to the bottom of a body of river? Jasper. What? What are you doing out here at the front of the covered wagon? Oh, I, I just I heard you guys talking. I was worried. I, I, I thought that you said that we was going to go down. Well, your mother, sometimes adults... Uh, being married and having children... Uh, uh, with the rain and traveling. Your mother wants to die. Oh, well, I'm so I'm so sorry to hear it. I, I, I could have sworn that what we was doing, me leaving school and, and us hitching grandma to the top of the wagon and, mm -hmm. and, and, and papa leaving this nice job at the seed store. And, and, and I thought this was all so that you could be happy again. Jasper, I will only be happy when I'm at the bottom of this river. <laughs> Every human being has a purpose. I think I have fulfilled mine. What was it? Well, um, some of the counter cross stitch I've done and raising you, of course, being married to your father. Yeah, and I mean, when you got to Baltimore when you were three years old, uh, we thought, okay, this kid's an orphan. Let's, uh, let's take him in despite his... This is another child here in the box. Oh. Um, yeah, the, I'm glad we got another one because the first one really did not work out. Yes, he yeah. was blue. <laughs> we has, still have lingering questions about his blueness. So tired, that one. Anyways, here's child in box. All right. Um, I, f I don't want to sound like a... Finish, Finish it. <laughs> Finish it. Finish <laughs> it. I will take nothing until this sentence is completed. I don't want to sound like a song that people just keep singing over and over again. <laughs> what? But, well, you know, you, sometimes if you want to hear a song more than once, you have to just sing it again because there's no, it's gone, you know, it's like you sing it and it just goes out in the air like and it's an, over. Like an earworm song? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't understand. Keep going. What's yeah. an earworm, Captain Fritz? <laughs> well, back in my country... They would have time. The country of <laughs> Dutch. Oh. I'm sorry, this is not my normal tongue. Did I say it right? Do you speak Hollandaise? <laughs> Fuck you. What? I what beg you? your pardon? I'm sorry, I don't speak this language. What? Fox child? Fox child. Box child. Box child. Box child. Yes. yes, yes. We'll give you the money. We'll give you the money. What were you going to say? Look, <laughs> at some point, are you going to sell us seeds? Hmm? <laughs> we, we want to plant a garden. I also have a seed store. Yes. Okay, so we could do both of these. We need these. to replenish our inventory. Sowing the seeds of love? That song? <laughs> How does that go? Sowing the seeds of song. She knows it! Ah, oh, you have almost completed your life cycle. I'm you sorry? have not much to live for beyond this child in box, presuming you buy slash adopt it. But I haven't embroidered anything yet. Oh, I have to work. Uh, hey, don't panic, don't panic. Don't worry. In Dutch, we can see the future. Your time is limited. <laughs> this is true of. Every Dutch person? Oh, boy, don't go back there if you don't want to be constantly harangued by the specter of doom. 
Well, bad news for you. Hey, Papa? Yes, a boulder's going to crush you. Oh, Dutch. <laughs> Sounds bad. See my predicament. Okay, well, listen, we'll, uh, we'll take this kid. How old is he? Okay, three. You sound like you're bargaining with me. How old that do was, you want that it to be? That was like a definitive... But just three? sidebar. Yeah. How old of a baby are you looking for? One. That's what this two. is. Mm-hmm. His teeth are so big. Yep. Baby teeth. You know how they grow from other countries. I really need this money. All right. What do you think? Should we do it, Miriam? I guess we should do it. I'm not sure what else right. we're doing. Yeah, this Everyone guy. Everyone else has children. I know. I guess. Why, why do, why do, I hate the times we live in. We'll take him. Thank you. Very good. All right. You sure don't want the blue one? I don't think that's an option anymore. Just think about He's it. He's a little bluer than the last time we saw him. Mm-hmm. Do that's, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, blooming. He's blooming. And... <laughs> I just wish you guys would stop telling me that story. <laughs> it's fun to tell. I gotta be honest. I feel like I hear something new in it every time. It just doesn't make me feel especially needed or wanted. Jasper. Yes? Papa. <laughs> he, still, he still addresses me in that Dutch fashion. <sighs> Jasper. <sighs> we need to band together as men and get across this river with the wagon, okay? Well, Mom's not coming no more. We're well, going to drown her? We're not going to. I can not gonna, drown you want myself. Me to, she can I don't drown. need someone to drown. This is so difficult. I know, I, honey. I'm dealing with it. I, I, Jasper, your mother. We're not going to drown your mother. We're, I'll drown her if you don't get me down from here. Oh, grandmother. Oh. <laughs> she oh. threw up again. Well, ma, you got me tied to the top of this thing. What a hair trigger! Good <laughs> lord, it's so hot. Jasper, get me one of my embroidered cloths to wipe up your grandma's vomit. Yes, mama. What a good boy you are. Ma, come on now. We didn't even feed you a meal. I don't know what you could be possibly vomiting. It's anger. I'm just spewing bile. You're up on top like you wanted. You got that beautiful view of the river. We stop every so often to clean out your enclosure. (laughs) These ropes are getting loose. Here he is. Here he is, Mama. Here you go. Here he is. Thank you. Here. I wanted to be tied in tight. Well, Ma, Joe can only do so much. Ma, I'm doing the best I can. He's not a sailor. Oh, oh there oh, she goes again. Uh, I mean, come, that's just out of spite. It's saying, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm unhappy up here. It's splashing onto the cows. Oh, hi there. <laughs> what? Who's this? Huh? Uh, from, from the other side of the river. Yeah, well, hello, hello. 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 Howdy. Hey. <laughs> I'm the sheriff in these parts. You folks need to get across that river. Toot sweet. Okay, can you help us at all or no? I'm over here, but that tide, she's not sinking. Yeah, all right. So you're just telling us we should get across the river, which we're already trying to do. Woo, I'd hurry up. Okay, any advice? We're from Baltimore. Also, this river has a tide? (laughs) I thought that was traditionally for... It feeds into the ocean, so it's all probably... Oh, and all the the rain, which was mentioned previously. (laughs) Oh, yeah, sorry. (laughs) You got to clear it up. No, what? No, what? no, we don't at all. Well, if I were you, I'd send one of you across with a rope. Presuming that one makes it, we can get the town folk to drag you across. <laughs> well, so we should just, do you, do you Jasper, want me to yes, do it? I I'm do. a very strong swimmer. Yeah, oh, hold, I do. Hold and on a second. What? I don't know. I'm worried about the the rising tide of this river and... Well, you're just a child. I mean, how old are you now, anyway? Let's go with nine. Nine years old? Your teeth are so big. They're going to keep growing until they eventually grow through my brain and kill me. <laughs> They're going the other way? They both go both ways. I'm oh, like a no. beaver. Up and down. Oh, no. Dutch Unless I chew He's on wood, doomed. that's why I keep cribbing on this side of this here wagon. Oh. <sighs> Your mother and I, we need to discuss this. All right. I'm going to stand right next to you. Uh, Think about okay. something else, though. Yeah. Yo, obviously. Hey, Junior, come keep me company. Uh, there, you can talk to your grandmother. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Joseph. Miriam, he's only nine years old, he says. I don't think that's true. I think he's 12 or 13. 
Really? He's strong, nine-year-old. It's so hard to tell by his teeth. I mean, do you know what I mean? Are those even, are those his permanent teeth or are they baby teeth? <laughs> hey, kid, you gonna come play with us other city kids out here in the street? Uh, uh sure, I, I guess I'll give it a sh- I'll give it a go. I'm Moxie, and this is Big Moose. Hi, Big Moose. My name is Jasper. Hello, Jasper. Oh. <laughs> hi, Big Moose, hi. You're a kid, too? Yep. How old are you? This many. Oh, 46. Yep. <laughs> He's a certified accountant. Good. Great. Yeah, um, I'm sort of like that, too. Come on out and play with a hoop and a stick in the street. I'd love that. I only have ever played with a stick. I never had no hoop before. Oh, uh-huh. you're in for a wild ride. Hey, guys, who's this new kid? Hi, my name's Grover. I'm a thoracic surgeon, and I'm 12 years old. <laughs> well, how do? Uh, my name is Jasper, and despite being in a big city, I have this accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural. It was born into me. It works for you. Thanks. I think it's Dutch. So we're going to play the hoop and a stick game? We were going to play that, but now that you're here, maybe we'll do something different. Yeah, something different. Well, well this sounds absolutely fine. I'll get the ruler. <laughs> Okie dokie. We're going to measure you and then beat the shit out of you. <laughs> 15, 16, he could be 20. I mean, you put it that way, it sounds like maybe we should let him swim across. He he is a pretty strong swimmer. Yeah, and if if something should happen to him, we could always get another child. We just have to call Captain Fritze. <sighs> do we really want to do this again? Though? You no, know we I mean? don't. Oh, it's the worst, right? It is. No one wants to talk about it. I'm not a good parent. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. <laughs> Junior, come on up here while you're uh, oh, mom hard. Yeah. Talking. Okay, hi. Yes, Grandma, what do you need? Now you listen to me and you listen to me, Claire. I'm trying. We're fixing to get out of here, you and me. Are we going to make a break for it finally? Oh, absolutely. All right, great. I've already got our provisions stored up. I got them in this bindle stick. Tremendous. That's all we need. Yeah. I got this. Uh, let's take a look. Make sure we got everything you need. Right. All right, now we got uh, this uh, lip balm. Tremendous. We've got an, uh, a nice ungent. Excellent. We've got this ointment. Ugh. I've got, I've got a poultice. Do you have any salves? I've got a salve oh, here for you. Good, good, good got, boy. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think we got everything we need. You got quite the Adam's apple on you. Sheriff, I don't know. Are they going to make it? I don't know. I shouted across the river. What else can I do? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, we could point out that... Um, the bridge? Yeah. Well, I mean, think of it this way. Uh-huh. Out here in the Wild West, if they're not going to see a bridge... They don't need a bridge. Sheriff, your logic is airtight. Well, that's why most of the coroner and the dentist. <laughs> now, a little bit off the back and sides as usual? Absolutely. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Miriam. Joseph? Where's Jasper and Ma? I don't know. We were so deeply in discussion about... How neither of us could discipline and our communication skills were so bad, I, I didn't notice them go. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have started that checkers game. Oh. But you did get kinged three times. I did get kinged three times. It's personal best. Oh. It's just us now. Well. I don't know where they could be. Are you sure I got to carry you? Pa- and paddle. You got to kick, too. I'm doing all of my best. Boom, boom. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Wild dog. River dog. River dog. River dog. Oh, God. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, what's up, Sheriff? You did put away the river dogs, didn't you now? Ooh, was I supposed to do that? I better get my coroner's hat on. I better get my... <laughs> Family ready for the news. Finish the sentence. I did. All right. Uh, I, I, let's search for them as soon as we just finish up this game. I really okay. do want to just. I mean, we're I mean, tied. We're so close. To each. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, okay. All right. Uh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Ha ha ha. Very clever, Miriam. Very clever. Pretty sneaky. Yeah! Mountain man! Mountain man! Oh, huh. y'all are in trouble now! Oh, Joseph, it's yeah. mountain men! They always announce themselves when they arrive! <laughs> We're the mountain men! The mountain men! We come in our mountain bathosphere! Oh, it's what? Right on the 
Baby Wagon. Underwater mountain man. That's right, baby. You heard tell of us. You can't see down there, but it's all kinds of mountains and volcanoes. Miriam. <laughs> You're covered in swamp stuff. Miriam, get in front of me. Okay. Uh, uh, I defy you to attack myself or my very weak husband. Yeah, Underwater she's not. Underwater mountain man. We are. Un- okay, you. He said it, yeah. We're underwater mountain men. I want to make sure they understand the premise. It's it, just I wanted to declare. Oh, you do it, then. Yes, let me just, I think I understand the confusion. Now, ma'am and sir, we are underwater mountain men. That's right. This is Rodney. Uh, this here is uh, Till Peak. And this is Professor T.J. Hudson. It's an honorary doctorate. <laughs> he got it because of his various accomplishments in the entertainment. <laughs> Well, I'd like to see a trick. He can one of those things where he bends backwards and makes him into a box, but his belly button staring straight up to Jesus Christ. You just watch this. Well, oh, my, where's his, what's up and what's down? Oh. It's a perfect oh. human cube. Well, gentlemen, I don't know if you intend to threaten us, but I do not value my own life. That's right. She's not afraid to die. We heard you got some escapees. Yeah, what happened to the rest of your kid? What was in your cover wagon? I'm ashamed to say we do not know. We were very engaged in this here game. Yes, we were playing checkers, the sport of kings. Well, us underwater mountain men, we say. Underwater, underwater mountain men. Come we're up some in of the best, feet. the best trackers that there ever were. As long as they're still in this river here somewhere, we can find them. The well, tide on this river is horizon. Time's escaping. Lucky for you, we seem threatening, but we's actually a trio of good Samaritan. Well, we to help folk, but sometimes we eat a folk. Well, if they oh, die, we will we will find them, but we may eat them. If they's dead. Well, I don't know if this will help or hurt, but one of them is Dutch. I mean, is that doing anything for you guys? Or? Okay. Uh, we can do uh, it. Sounds exotic. <laughs> All right, let's get on the case. All right, I do what I'm at, man. Assemble. Roll call. <laughs> Tilpy. Me. <laughs> now you're Tilpy. I'm oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you you said you're Rodney. I'm Rodney. Captain. I'm uh, Dr. Oh, professor. Excuse me. Professor. It's excuse an honorary. Is it's it a, a suffix or a prefix? It's a prefix. His right. belly button stares straight up to the Holy Ghost. That's right. Oh, so you do believe in the Trinity. I won't bog you down. I with feel like we need to redo the roll call. We're not. Maybe we. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. Roll call! I'm I'm right. about, what about me? I'm okay. Underwater. Okay, okay. Right, right. I think we need to. Let's take a yeah, step back. Let's just, uh, let's just calm it down. All right. So, T.O.P., you mm-hmm. announce roll call. Okay. I will say. Underwater mountain man, sound off. Uh, I'll start you by start. sounding off. Exactly. And only for me now. I'm only going to sound my name off. Yeah, you don't need to say all the names. I can say any names you want, though. If, if you want, I can. Roll call! Well, now, hold on. Now oh. I'm thinking of it a different way. What if what if the roll call was Rodney saying all the names? Okay. I mean, I would like a few more lines. Lots of people feel changed, but I don't mind. How about if you do all the names and then you say, and that's what I call roll call. Well, okay. Woohoo! Let's- Underwater planes, people! What? Hey, hey. Oh, no. Well, if it oh. isn't the underwater mountain man, oh. I'm going on enemies. enemies. It's a rumble. It's the <laughs> underwater place, people. We've been underwater behind you for miles and miles. What? I oh, forgot to look leave. through the back window at the basket field. And we would have seen them forever because they're on the planes under there. She's got pussy right. willows woven into her hair. It's camouflaging. <laughs> that man is wearing a reed skirt. Roll call. <laughs> Gerbus. <laughs> Fingus. These all related. That was a brief roll call, and they undercut the drama of our roll call. That's when we dined out all the details. You don't even know what a roll call is, underwater place. We pride people. ourselves in a roll call. I we did a tremendous roll call. I don't know about you. Sorry, uh, do we need to be here for this? Or? Yeah, we're really, this is a very competitive relationship. Don't you want to find your missing duchy? Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all right, all right. then, that's settled. Uh, now, if you excuse us, underwater planes people, we got a roll call to attend to. Underwater mountain man! Uh, no, you say ro- oh, we are roll call we already so went through Sounds it. like a mess to me, it's darling. Terrible. You it's terrible. You switched it, so I thought space. I was going to say that because you said roll no, call, and that was you, my thing. You say, I no, I was telling them we was going to do this. Oh, King oh. me, King me. <laughs> uh, what? How did you? Oh, Miriam. Just a little focus. 
All right. Do, do you mind? Okay. Here's All where right. we go. Okay. I, boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, the grandma, grandma, the, 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 them dogs almost on us. No, just let them eat us. Let no. them eat us at this point. No, I've, I've, I have fought my whole life to survive. I've, I had to shack up with that weird family, and I had to be, uh, initially I had to, uh, I had to live in a box, and now I'm riding you like a raft. I'm doing <laughs> everything I can to survive out here. I'm not going to let go of life. Just hold on to me. Just oh. hold on to me and oh. let death wash over us river dog cease oh hello what is that man <laughs> hello human no oh. i am the spirit of this river oh he's so shimmery you're shimmery yeah i look like a guy made out of water right yeah yeah you're in the shape of a man yeah. it's uncanny right yeah you look just like a man but made out of water no i know oh okay all right I'm going to cradle you in a water cradle and bring you to the shore. I feel like we're cradled in water. We're in a river. So essentially we're already No, cradled. I mean, I'm going to make a shape. It's so a that bit it, redundant. It's going to somehow support our weight. I'm trying to help. Oh, well, we're okay. interested. All I right. just am trying to get the details. But if, if you let me do it, then you'll see what it is. Right, gort. <laughs> you have at her. What? Of course. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you called me Gort, which is not my name. What is Sorry. your name? <laughs> you, you look what like your a name? Gort. My name... <laughs> and we will call him Agus. Agus goes forth. Do I? Agus, Agus goes forth. Goes forth. I don't have a sign. Chisel it into the side of a mountain, Ugh. so the name shall be forever. Agus. Although Agus sounds like Pogwis, and we know what Pogwis means. Oh, come on, guys. Pogwis, come on. Pogwis, Pogwis. This is why I wanted to be called Wateronomy. <laughs> It's Aguas with two S's. <laughs> All right. I, I guess I I don't know how to spell. Uh, good. Okay, here we go. Oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> River Duck, what did I say? We're, sh we're on the shore. We're, we, we done made we it, made Grandma. It. Oh, Grandma, we made it. Left those awful people behind. Humans, how did you come to be in my river? We were fording it. Uh, me and What's my, that mean? Uh, it's essentially making a wagon float so that you can get across a river. What a weirdly specific word. It is, I don't know why they, they must have, we must do it so much we had to come up with a name for it. I guess so. Anyway, it's I a new it's one on me. It's going to be relevant in the future as a means of transportation. Oh, well, 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 if it is in Pogwars. Oh, hello, Shaughnessone. Oh, <laughs> you'd think you'd be a little kinder to a forest spirit. Yeah, you'd think. Anyways, how's it going with your dick name? Look, it's got two S's now, so it's different, all right? A, a, a dick with two S's is still a dick. What do you want? Oh, you know. How's your dog? Snap. My rip. <gasps> <gasps> Dead. <laughs> he cast a spell using his words, and the vines grew up out of the ground and choked that dog to death. Just I know, I saw. His name. What? <sighs> You're going to pay for this, Shauna's own. Oh, really? Yeah. I, you and me mix, all will get his mud. Wh what? Water and dirt we mix, we get oh, mud. Oh, right, right, right. How about this? What if I cause the river to rise using its mighty tide system? What? And I drown this forest. A river has no tide. What have you been it doing? It does now. Oh! <laughs> well, you won. Hey, what's... Oh, my feet are wet. Yeah, mine too. We're... Look over there. This is this is ridiculous. This is like a we're standing in the middle of a, some sort of tidal pool. <sighs> it looks like everyone over there is probably, you know... Dead? Yeah. Dutch. Dumb? They're so Dutch, they're dead. <laughs> and dumb. Let's get back to Baltimore. Do you think that would make you want to live again? I think so. Worth a try. Isn't it? No, no. it is. No, come on. <laughs> Joseph. Let's, who's this? I'm what? drowning underwater, mountain man. I can't survive out of the water. Where's our bathosphere? You're going to leave your boy behind and just go. 
He was never our boy. People can't own people. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. Thank no, you, they, Miriam. I believe that they actually can. Right actually, now. technically, In my husband owns me. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm property. Oh, there's all kinds of things. It's not not great. Yeah. Not great That's right true. now. That's true. Will, 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 will you take it with you to Baltimore? Well, can you sell seeds? Can we? Quest, actual question. I I, feel, I believe in my abilities to sell seeds. I know how to fertilize. I could uh, do some ad- some nice advertisements. Well, what? <laughs> one of the underwater mountains was in advertising. Wow. This changes everything. Well, one of them has a degree as a doctor. I mean, it's honorary. They're very honorary. surprising. They've got levels. It's honorary, but I like to feel deserved. All right. Well, uh, would you guys mind... Uh, Pulling our wagon out of this. We can bed. run as fast as the wind. Underwater mountain man. Oh, we love to you as you run. Oh, dear. It's so hard to understand that one with his quivering. <laughs> I got the DT. Oh, well, let's let's, let's feed let's these guys have a some drink. rum. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's the way to get us to go. All right. Here's a, a shot for everybody. And right. to Baltimore. To Baltimore. To Baltimore. <laughs> And it all happened in a place called <laughs> Spontaneous Nation. <laughs> Dave Ellaby, where can people find you? What do you want to tell people about? Oh, uh, come to uh, the UCB on Franklin Friday nights at 930 and see Soundtrack. It's an improv show. <laughs> <laughs> And my last name, Villa Peak, is, I don't know. I'm not into social media, though. It's fine. Oh, Come check out the Twitter Gene, once a year. Gene is, no, you tweet more than that. Gene, <laughs> I enjoy Gene's Twitter very much. Thank you. And thank your Instagram. You. Gene's yeah, Instagram is a lot of fun. She does these weird little stories with, with my feet. With my feet, I got to do more of those. <laughs> and she's, she has little tiny feet that she sticks her fingers into and then does a little story. Are they here in person? Yes. This is crazy. They're oh, my God, you guys. I mean, guys. you can't hear her. Oh my God, Kev! You got to get a picture. <laughs> nice. You got to get a picture. I haven't used them in a long time. Those I'm are glad amazing. you keep them on hand, though, just in I case. Do. Literally on hand right <laughs> now. <laughs> hey, ding dong. All right, then, Gene. It's the end of June, so do you have? I know you've been working on a lot of TV stuff. Do you have anything that, that you can talk about yet, or no? It's going to be out in a year, but shark, oh, okay. yeah, it's not worth Sharknado. it. Sharknado. <laughs> All right, Ooh. Chris Tallman. Uh, I have two things. I have a podcast of my own called Next Level. That's right. On the Howl I've been on it. Check it out. You should. That's a great episode. I just want to remind everybody: July seventh, Spider Man Homecoming comes out. It needs a little word of mouth. So, That's All right. right. Yep. <laughs> Good looking out. Thanks. And you are Mr. Chris Tallman yep. on the socials. All of them. There we go. Thank you. Lovely. In Josh. Uh, I am at Joshingtron mm-hmm. on all of the uh, social mediums. <laughs> and uh, you can find my work if you play video games. I direct video game voiceover. There you so go. play Mass Effect or Ghost Recon Wildlands or... Uh, League of Legends, and you'll see my handiwork. What's League of Legends? It's the number one most played game in the world. It's, <laughs> it is uh, China's number one sport, in fact. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's what? like a, it's the a, video game is the China's, video game number, is one China's number one sport. They sold uh, out the Staples Center in less than an hour for the finals of this, where you just sit and watch a, a couple of teams of gentlemen. Who sit a lot? Uh, I'll, I'll look up the game. You should. This was anyway, information I wasn't looking for, but I'm glad I have. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite a thing. And also, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I might be on blind spot again. I sure hope so. Who knows? Cross the fingers. The end of June, you do live stuff sometimes, right? Uh, yes, uh, quarters in June is a show I there do. We go. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, we may be doing it at IO by now. That's oh, I almost said what it stands for, but you're not supposed to say that anymore. You're not because people could get in trouble. Okay, oh, good to know. Right. Oh, I'm getting a very emphatic <laughs> yes from someone. All right, great. Ladies and gentlemen, Eben Schletter. You can find him at Eben Schletter on all the things. Check out Eben Schletter's work that is not Spontaneous Nation based. And also check out Eben's own podcast, Eben Schletter's Fantastical Musicorium. How do you spell Eben Schletter? Why, it's very simple. It goes like this. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. Thank you, Maestro. As for me, Spontaneous Nation Live returns to the Bell House in Brooklyn. Sunday, November 12th. There are still some tickets left for our late show, 10 p.m. show. Go to paulftompkins.com. That's the second time. <laughs> paulftompkins.com. <laughs> <laughs> paulftompkins.com slash live for tickets and find out where I'm going to be other times and places. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. 
Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti! Hello, people of Earwolf. It is Paul Shear. I host a show on Earwolf called How Did This Get Made with Jason Manzukis and June Diane Raphael, where we watch movies that are so bad, they're actually pretty damn great. I'm talking about Mannequin 2 on the move. 2.5 billion women in the world, and I'm trying to score with a statue. I'm talking about Rowdy Roddy Piper and Hell Comes to Frogtown. Shuts your heart! And of course, I'm talking about Ninja Terminator. You've got three days in which to return the golden ninja warrior, or else you die. The ninja empire is evil. We sat down this week with Alana Glazer and Abby Jacobson from Broad City to talk about Ninja Terminator live at Clusterfest. Take a listen to How Did This Get Made this week. Ninja Terminator. Don't miss it. Production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.